Okay, so consider an ellipse shown here in black. The two full centers are shown here as well. Now, the aspect ratio of this ellipse is 1.5. I can change this aspect ratio. I can make it be pretty eccentric at uh, 5, you know, a ratio of ma major to minor semi-axis. I can go all the way down to a circle. This other full side almost coinc uh, coinciding here, so this is nearly a circle. But let's start with an ellipse where the major by a minor axis, the ratio is 1.5. Now let me elect <coughs> two points on the boundary of this ellipse. A P1, which I can position anywhere by choosing an angle, right? And a P2, which I can position anywhere also uh, choosing an angle. And let's start uh, just for the first example with, uh, for example, P1 right here, and P2 I'm going to place it, say, at 45 degrees up here, okay, with the standard uh, ellipse parametrization. So this is what these angles refer to. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to consider the line passing through P2 perpendicular to the segment P2 minus P1, and I'm going to extend the segment along this perpendicular until it hits the ellipse again. So I'm going to go ahead and extend the segment, like so, perpendicular, and it hits the ellipse right here at a position I'm going to call P3. So now I have P1 to P2 and then a perpendicular all the way to P3. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to consider the perpendicular line and consider its intersection with the ellipse, which is going to happen uh, around here. So let's go ahead and extend this uh, once again. Here's a perpendicular to the segment P3 minus P2 passing through P3. I extend it and I pass here and I can label this guy as was P4. So I can do this maybe 10 times. Okay, I can continue this rule 10 times and I can label these guys uh, from P1 to P2 going through this uh, woven pattern here, P4, P5, P6, P5, etc., etc., etc. In fact, I can make uh, this pattern continue on to a large number of segments, for example, 100. Okay, now one of the things I'm interested in in this video is to investigate if this elliptic billiard uh, with a reflection rule that is, I would say, somewhat unusual, it says reflection rule by the perpendicular to the previous segment, right? If it, we can find patterns uh, on such an elliptic billiard. Uh, let's start, for example, so I have uh, this P1 at zero and, and P2 at, at 45. So here's a good technique to find these. I'm gonna take N all the way to a large number, doesn't matter what these labels are anymore. Let's just focus on this one uh, pattern here. And I'm going to vary the aspect ratio. I'm going to visually attempt to see if I find anything interesting. For example, when I'm near a circle, and this is very close to a circle, you can see the two foci here. In fact, I can force this to be even more circular like so. Of course, if I'm at 0 and 45 degrees, when I hit this position here, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, along the perpendiculars execute this type of symmetric path. In fact, if I change my theta 2 and I position P2 anywhere, I get what I would call a 4 periodic under this rule. Of course, if I now if I make this thing be a proper ellipse, for example at 1.2, I no longer have uh, a periodic path. Okay, okay well, at least it doesn't seem so. All right. Now, let's go ahead and go back to 1.5, and I'm going to place uh, theta 2 again at 45 degrees. And what I want to do here is I want to increase the number of reflections to 100, and I just want to visually scan the kinds of uh, tessellations that we get here, uh, weaving patterns that we get as we follow along uh, very slowly along A. And let me try to do this very slowly. So now I'm advancing on A very slowly here meaning that the ellipse is becoming uh, progressively more. In fact, this might not be working so well, so doing it by hand might be better. The ellipse is becoming progressively more. Uh, so we found something there. Let's go back to that one. Uh, I believe it was this one over here. So we found this pattern, okay? And it's pretty close. Uh, if I play around with these numbers here, I can get them to be pretty close to what I need. So for example, if I do this, or I go back to 55, I can get them to be pretty close to what I need in such a way that I can actually discover some of these periodic patterns. Okay, so this one doesn't look particularly interesting. Let's keep going. So here's one that looks uh, kind of cool, right? Let's put this at 1.73 and let's approach that uh, manually. So I think we passed the minimum right there. So here's a, a six periodic uh, path. 
let's uh, label these guys from P1 through P6. And you can see that I'm starting at this right vertex here. I'm proceeding over to P2 that happens to be at 45 degrees. And I found via this uh, visual process a particular major by semi minor semi axis ratio of 1.774, for which you get this very interesting, uh, a totally asymmetric pattern. Okay, so if we keep going here with the same uh, setup, let's see if we find something else. Oh, there is one. So what is that? We got to find it again. There it is. Okay, so yeah, so we're going to have to do this process of fine tuning uh, using, say, binary search, for example. And it looks like we're getting there. And this is pretty close to it. So let's investigate this particular guy here. So how many, how many uh, uh, edges do we have? We can go to four, five, six, and we can continue on labeling to seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Looks like this is a uh, 14 periodic uh, uh, pattern or orbit, right? Okay, so let's take this guy down to zero. I keep going here. Let's see if we find something else with this particular setting. Oh, this one looks pretty interesting. Let's go forward here. Looks like this is going to need a bit of fine tuning as well. Maybe like that. Maybe like that. Okay, so here's a pattern that looks somewhat, uh, this one actually looks perfectly symmetric, right? So I'm at this strange uh, aspect ratio of 2.4145, and I'm getting this interesting uh, pattern. Uh, the interesting game here is for us to find uh, specific uh, values of aspect ratio and distribution of these two points. We get these uh, uh, closed uh, periodic uh, uh, trajectories. And there's many of them. If you explore this in this fashion, okay, you're going to find sometimes very surprisingly uh, things that you don't expect. So there's another one buried in there. Okay, so this one's pretty rich. Of course, I'm limited by my capacity to actually operate this guy. Here's a very interesting one that is not. Uh, uh, say vertically symmetric. At least it doesn't seem that way. I have not seen this one before. So it looks like at 3.171, I'm getting with P1 at the right vertex and P2 at 45 degrees along the elliptic uh, parametrization. I'm getting this very interesting. Let's see how many vertices there are on this guy. There's 10. So this is a 10 periodic. Very nice. Let's keep going. So yeah, we could descend this all the way to a very, uh, here's another one. Uh, okay, this one might be worth investigating a bit. Let's make this be 85, 82, and 80. So it's 80 to five, maybe, something like that. So uh, how big is this guy over here? Let's uh, increase the labeling. So this looks like it's a 12 periodic. Again, not vertically symmetric. As far as I can tell. Oh, maybe this one is. Yeah, maybe this one has a strange... Uh, yeah, I mean, it's not quite vertically symmetric, right? But you have uh, certain uh, visible symmetries here. So, for example, uh, if I took this side here and uh, folded over to the other side and flipped it, it would be like this side over here. Now, what is 4.2825 have to do with the symmetry? It has to be investigated. <clears throat> Another thing that we can, <laughs> we can try is let's go back to the circle okay and let me reduce this number of uh of uh path segments here now instead of actually placing um placing p1 over here and p2 over there let's place p2 at the next natural position which might be 90 degrees okay so now i have them eat each at, at a uh, specific uh, vertex of the soon to be ellipse okay so let's go ahead and take this up to 100 segments again. And beautiful things will happen here as well, as long as I can find them. So here's one. This one is quite nice. Um, yes. Yeah, so this is kind of a magic number that keeps turning up. Uh, it's 32, I believe. Yeah, that's what it is, 1.932. You get this really amazing asymmetric pattern. And I haven't really looked at the geometry of it yet, but it looks like I have a rectangle here and another rectangle there, and I have uh, a six periodic. Okay, so let's go ahead and continue this on. Let's see if we find some, some other gold. If we strike gold again, 
Uh, looks like this guy here is pretty nice as well. Who would think, right? So here we are at, mm, okay, got to go up. 7, 5, or maybe 2, or maybe 3, no, it's 2, 5 maybe, or 2, maybe this is what it is, or 18, or 2, 2, yes. So here you have a N periodic, let's see how big N is. There it is, it's a 27 periodic, okay, that has P1 uh, over at the right uh, vertex of the ellipse, and P2 up at the top vertex, and I have this uh, interesting magical number of 2.2422. Now we're wondering if these numbers are uh, analytic or rational or whatever they are. They're probably not rational, they're irrational, but at least if they are analytic and if we, if we have a method to derive what they might be, they seem to be roots of, uh, uh, of very uh, high degree equations. All right. So let's see if we find uh, if we strike gold again, and we're going to be striking many curious uh, patterns here if, if, as we explore uh, the space with these two guys, you know, there in this particularly uh, precious uh, configuration. So here we have another. Uh, what is this? This is perhaps a 14 periodic. It has this really interesting uh, layout. And uh, yeah, as I experimented with this earlier today, I, I found really interesting patterns. Uh, here's another one that's quite complex. I doubt this is going to be even uh, amenable to analysis. Uh, how big is this guy? This guy looks like it's uh, maybe 22. Yeah, I'm always looking for uh, the vertex immediately before P1, the one that leads to P1. And I can see that this is a 22 periodic. Okay, so here's another configuration that is quite nice. Let's take this guy down now to, um, uh, let's take P2. So let's leave P1 here. I'm going to put P2 now at the next, perhaps, natural position, 45 degrees. We're getting this uh, uh, trivial uh, rectangle over here because we're in a circle. But uh, let's take N all the way to the top. The reason you see these lines thickening is because this guy is not quite a circle. As it goes closer and closer to a circle, uh, you get this uh, closer and closer approximation of this four periodic. But uh, this is sort of beyond uh, the scope here. So as we start moving now, uh, this family of ellipses very slowly across the aspect ratios, we start hitting some gold. And I might have missed that guy. This is uh, pretty frustrating because sometimes you go through a pattern and you miss it. That one was pretty nice. I think it's right here, right there. You see, it all depends on the precision that I can move my pretty bad mouse around. I should buy a better mouse with more precision so I can do these ex manual experiments more uh, aptly. So let's look at this guy here. Now I have P1 over here and P2. P1 at the vertex, P2 at 45 degrees. And I'm getting what looks like a, what is this, 10 periodic? Yeah, this looks like a 10 periodic because P10 is mapping onto P P1 over here. That's a pretty nice asymmetric. You can see that these guys do not pass through the center of the billiard. It's an asymmetric uh, 10 periodic. Okay, so as I, again, move my, uh, my mouse forward here, I'm going to start hitting other interesting patterns. This is at 1.666. This is quite interesting. Maybe this is a true... Uh, 1.666 thing, or maybe it's just a coincidence. Yeah, maybe it is. Yeah, so let's go 55. Yeah, this doesn't look like it's a, a simple a trajectory. Uh, it's a, uh, it's an optical illusion, but this one is, right? So yeah, this number is magical. I believe it's 1.73 maybe, or four, there it is. So I think we've seen something similar before, but we're having here an asymmetric situation again. Uh, let's keep going. This is a six periodic. So here's another one. That one. Now oh, that that one we just saw. Okay. Here's another one. I like when they turn out to be very simple with very few uh, with very few uh, segments. So for example, this one here clearly looks uh, periodic. It's probably a pretty high one. Uh, let's see here. P1. So it's here. It's 22. It's a 22 periodic. Uh, but these are pleasing, and we can investigate whether they have some symmetries or not. But I'm actually more pleased when I'm sort of scanning through these, and I, something like this turns up. For example, let's see if we can find this one. Uh, 
Yeah, so I've passed it. So it's one, and maybe there's a five here. Here's a six. Here's a five. So yeah, this one's pretty curious. It looks like it's uh, symmetric on both directions. And uh, this is, what is this, an eight? Let's see what it is. It's an eight periodic. All right, at 2.415. So as we keep going, right, we, uh, we hit upon uh, quite a number of these guys. Did we just see this one or not? I think this one is slightly different. No, that's the one we just saw, right? Yes. So, yes. So we have to remember these numbers so that we don't repeat this analysis. Uh, all right. So as you go more and sort of higher and higher, uh, stuff like this may turn up, higher and higher eccentricity. Uh, my sort of just practical experience is that sometimes uh, the number of... Uh, possibility starts decreasing somewhat. It looks like we hit on, upon something here. If I put 8, yeah, so 85, yeah, so we're, we're upon something here. Okay, so here's another periodic uh, function. Let's go ahead and now <coughs> play with 30 degrees setting. So I'm going to place theta 2 at 30 degrees, and let's see what turns up over here. Now you can see that we have many combinations on picking rational fractions of 90 degrees to place P1 and P2 on. But we have many combinations, and I suppose that these combinations could be somewhat searched numerically, but I'm doing this thing uh, uh, in a very uh, manual and artisanal way. So let's see if something turns up over here. And I believe I've found something. Uh, yeah, this one it could, could contain something. We just have to go down. Oh, there it is. Four, maybe. Maybe it's a six. Yeah, you see, so we're approaching. There it is. We found something at this setting that is quite pleasing and looks completely asymmetric. I love when something has a few number of edges and it's very asymmetric like this one. How big is this guy? This guy looks like it is 10. It's 10 periodic. So if I go down one guy here uh, to nine, you can see here that P1 is connected from P10. So here's a beautiful, totally asymmetric 10 periodic turning up. When P1 is on the right vertex, P2 is at 30 degrees, and A over B ratio of major to minor semi-axis of this ellipse is at some number near 1.557. Uh, are there other things that are going to turn up? For sure. I found a bunch of them. I'm just not remembering what their values are, but this one here looks like it's forming something. Yes. So let's try another setting now of, let's put now, let's move M around. So P1 around. I'm going to place P1 at, at uh, 30 and I'm going to place P2 at 60. So neither is going to be at a vertex of, of the ellipse anymore. Let's move A around very slowly. As the French say, do small. We're going to move this guy and we're going to likely find some gold here. I have no idea. I'm just exploring with you guys. There it is. So it looks like I think like we've seen this before or something similar to this before. Uh, I'm not sure. Maybe not. So it looks like this guy can go to 31 maybe or 32. Yes, this number This number seems magical Okay, across many positionings of, of these first two vertices. Uh, it always seems to generate this kind of a two rectangle uh, hexagonal periodic uh, trajectory. So there it is, this number here, 1.932, seems to be very resonant with 0, 30, 60, and 90 degrees. Uh, yes, as we move forward, doesn't look like we found, okay, we found something cute here. Uh, yeah, it looks like I can get closer to it. This sometimes is an optical illusion. Okay, this is not what you expect. It's a much more complicated trajectory. But you can see the sort of the pattern, the, the attraction base and forming, and you're sort of nearing something that has some structure. Okay, so I have 30, 60. Let's go ahead and place uh, uh, P1 now at the top vertex. So P1 is up here. I got this P2. Since the ellipse is sort of asymmetric uh, horizontally and vertically, this is likely to generate... Uh, new stuff for us. So let's go ahead and start increasing this and let's see what turns up. Here's one. There's one pattern that might be catchable. Let's see if I can catch that. That one is this catchable. 1.371. This is also kind of one of those magic numbers that keeps turning up. It's not as magical. It has kind of like two 
two folds, but it is periodic over 100, uh, 100 segments. You can see here that this is this is looks like it's a 23 periodic or something of that order, uh, maybe 25. Let's see if it goes to 26. Yeah, 26, and then it repeats. Okay, so this is a 26 periodic. Okay, so let's keep going. There is another one over there in the middle. I think you got the idea, right? This one is nice. Oh, this one actually illustrates. Did we see this before? No, I don't think so. Ah, uh, maybe we did. Okay, maybe we just saw that. Let's keep going here. Here's another pleasing phenomenon. Uh, how big is this guy? This is 18 periodic with P1 at the top vertex and P2 at 60 degrees. Okay, let's, uh, well, wait, let me proceed just to see if we hit upon any other goal here. I'm sure we would if we tried. There it is. There's a pretty beautiful one. This is pretty beautiful, right? Uh, how big is this periodic? This is a 14 periodic. Wow. That's amazing. At 2.676. Let's keep going. So, you know, you got to scan this multiple times or maybe devise an automated procedure to scan these. Not sure how I would do this yet. Let's put now P2 at 30 degrees. So we invert the situation. Okay, so now P2 is at 30 degrees, and I'm going to scan it. Okay, so right down here, there's some stuff. Right down here, there's one. Here's one nicely woven, high dimensional, high degree pattern. I'm not even going to, well, let's count it. Why not? Looks like it's 22, 22 uh, periodic. Okay. Oh, here's a beautiful one too. Let's see if we can catch this one. It looks like it's close to one of those settings that, oh, maybe not. You know, these numbers, I don't really have a good understanding of them yet, but it looks like this is another beautiful pattern at 14 periodic. Okay, cool. And then what else is buried on this combination? Here's an interesting one. Yeah, we're, we're close to that. 0.66 thing. You can see here the subtraction basin. As you start approaching the structure, the the rays they start to assemble close to each other, and then you get to this basin here, which you have to manually approach. See, it looks like I might have passed it. Yeah, so it's 45. Then I gotta go 46, 47, 48, and near the basin, it's extremely sensitive. So what kind of an amperiodic is this? This is a 10 periodic. Is that correct? Yes. Wow. Look at how asymmetric this thing is. Incredible. Okay, let's keep going. And 1.648, that sounds like maybe perhaps a well-known number. Could be. Uh, here's another similar one. Here's another cool one. Yeah. Yeah. So you can see here that the kinds of patterns that are accessible to us. All right, so I guess we've covered everything, right? I mean, the other things that I could do would be perhaps similar. For example, I could put 30 on one side, I could put zero on one side, and maybe advance this over to, let's say, uh, 90 plus 30, 120. So I got this pattern over here. Would this be any different than something that I've tried before? We could look, we could look. So, you know, we, we need a method for this, right? So we could see just as we scan through these, if we, you know, happen to to visit anything uh, new and interesting. So we've seen something like this before, right? Seven, eight, there you go. We've seen something like this before. This is a 10 periodic that keeps showing up. Um, keep going here. Here's another one buried in the middle there. It has a lot of structure. Uh, 9.2 maybe, 9.3, 9.4, there it is. How big is this guy? This guy is 16 periodic. Maybe we've seen it before. Um, anyway, guys, this has been a lot of fun. I'm still exploring it. I'm still finding, discovering stuff. You know, there's the fractional game. You can say 22.5, which is half 45 degrees. And you can put this other guy here at 45. And you get a bunch of surprising new patterns, you know, that you don't expect.
So here's one. It looks like we're approaching this one. Yeah, this one's pretty nice. Yep, 49. Looks like I'm getting closer to the basin. I can, yeah, approach this even more. 43, 43, 42. There it is. Look at this beauty, guys. So here am I at 22.5 degrees. And I'm doing a six periodic that is completely asymmetric. You can see that the self intersection is not happening uh, in any uh, given place that might look <laughs> reasonable. And you can see here that the heights of these guys, uh, you know, these points are not located at the same heights. So this is fascinating. What is the structure? What's the mathematical structure of of, of these uh, of these roots, right? Of these objects that uh, come out to be uh, uh, periodic. If I now do 90 degrees minus 22 and a half, do we find anything? I'm sure we will because these are rational. The question is, do we find any gems? Here's a gem. Here's a low-dimensional gem. There it is. Uh, let's move this guy around. Yeah, I think it's four. Are we playing the same game here? Looks like it's a similar picture. And this, this particular pattern seems to be... Uh, Oh, likes to occur at 1.932. This number, for some reason, is magical. Uh, as I move these guys around, so place this guy at zero and this guy at 30, right? This number, 1.932, and we shall uh, determine what it is, is actually producing. Uh, 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 it, it seems to be associated with uh, with uh, periodic trajectories. So if I place this guy at 60, uh, here it did not do that. But if I place this guy at 0 and this guy here at 30, I invert rows, and this goes to 60 or 90. Yes, at 90 I get the same thing that I get perhaps at 45. No. So if I say 0 and 45, 0 and 45, I get this pattern. If I say 0 and 90, I get this pattern. So this number I know is one of the magical numbers that is turning up uh, over and over. Anyway, guys, I think you got the idea, right? Uh, we've uh, talked about a new kind of uh, reflection rule for the elliptic billiard. It's not the usual reflection rule that you see uh, in elliptic billiard uh, theory where you actually reflect each ray about the normal, symmetrically about the normal, as if each segment were a light ray or a point mass that is just bouncing elastically against the boundary. Here, this is not the case, right? We're not bouncing elastically. I'm just taking the direction of the previous segment, for example, P1 and P2, and reflecting perpendicular to that previous segment and repeating this rule. And believe it or not, we can find some beautiful geometry uh, with such systems. I don't know how much they've been studied in the past or if this is somewhat of a novelty or not. If I say 45 here and I, I place this guy at, you know, uh, 45, 5 plus 22.5, you get some novelty, right? You get some patterns that seem to be attracted into basins and, and fall into uh, periodic trajectories. This one looks like it's approaching something. You see, I'm just doing this haphazardly here. And it is indeed approaching uh, another version of those two rectangles. That's six periodic with two rectangles. Okay, guys, thank you very much.